guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to share with you my recipe for my uh, pot roast in a slow cooker. Now this is like a beer braised pot roast. It is so out of this world delicious. I had to share the recipe with you. It's wonderful for this time of year because you can set it and forget it and you've got an amazing meal on your hands at the end of a long day. And it's also great for entertaining as well or for your holiday meal because it's one less thing you really have to worry about that day. The recipe, the ingredients for them are from very few and simple. You'll need a nice piece of rump roast, that's what I've got here. I also have got some celery, carrots, onion, garlic, rosemary. I've got some dry thyme, of course you can use fresh. I've got some granulated onion, I've got a nice lager here. You'll need a little bit of beef stock and some Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper and some vegetable oil and a little bit of flour as well. This is really easy and I love it. Now what I've got here is a large skillet with high sides and I've got some vegetable oil in there about three tablespoons I'd say. You want this to get nice and hot. Now the one thing about slow cooker, whenever you make something like a slow cooker, like a, like a piece of meat or something, you want to sear it first because you want that gorgeous color all around. Otherwise, the outside becomes a little bit gray and there's just not, you know, caramelizing the outside and getting a nice brown and crispy really adds so much flavor. I think it's key to getting a perfect roast every time in a slow cooker. So season this well with salt and pepper on all sides. After you salt and pepper it, dredge it in your flour, shaking off the excess, put it in your hot oil, and you're gonna let this get nice and golden brown on all sides, and I will show you what it looks like when it's ready. My roast is looking gorgeous, I got a nice color all around, it just took a few minutes. Now, this is optional, but my thing, my thing is, if you've got the skillet out nice and hot, you might as well saute your veggies for just a quick minute to develop a little bit of color and caramelization around them. So I'm just going to throw these right in here into my hot skillet. I'm going to give these a quick stir and these are literally going to just take a couple of minutes. And I also got those brown bits at the bottom of the pan from my roast. So it's just going to add to this. And you know what? Quick tip. If you're doing this, you know, if you're going to work in the morning and you're thinking, oh, Laura, I don't really want to be sautéing or anything like that early in the morning, I hear you, girlfriend. This is what you do. You sear this the night before. You quickly sauté these the day before. You put them in a sleeve of your co slow cooker, cover it, and then the next morning, all you have to do, pour in your liquid, pop it into the sleeve or whatever it's called of the slow cooker, turn it on, and go about your day. You can do this when you have a party as well or your holiday meal, exactly the same. Just take a couple minutes the night before, prep everything. You only have one pan to wash, and you've got an amazing, amazing entree that really is just incredible with that beer. It's amazing. And just give this a little bit of salt and pepper. Another minute, and they're done. These look good. Turn them off. You can see they start to develop some color and soften. Good to go. Okay, in your slow cooker pot, whatever that's called. I don't even know what it's called actually. Oops. I'm gonna take half my veggies. You don't need to do this. It, you can dump it all in, but I feel like it's got like a nice little flavorful bed for the roast to sit on. It's a little thing, right? The rest of the veggies on top. Oh, gorgeous. I want to make my little flavor base here. I've got my beer. I've got my water, that's going to make my stock with my beef, what is this called? Beef base, thank you very much, that I can never get to open it. There you go. I'm going to need probably a good teaspoon of this. You can use a bouillon cube if you wanted to. A couple of dashes of Worcestershire sauce. Love this so very much. Now everything is seasoned, I mean you have your seasoned beef, you've got your seasoned vegetables, so you don't need to add any more salt at this point. You just pour this right in. The beef base will melt, don't worry. Pour your granulated onion and thyme right in there. Oh, put in your sprigs of rosemary, lid on in your slow cooker sleeve. 
you're going to need to read the manufacturer's instructions on your slow cooker. I mean, I've, this I know will take about three to four hours on high or about eight hours on low, and it's going to be amazing either way. And then once it's cooked, you can set it to warm, go about your day, go about whatever you need to do, and it will be perfect for you at any minute. Now I'm going to pop this in, set it, forget it, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. My roast was in my slow cooker for about four hours. I just took it out and look at this gorgeousness right here. Now, if you wanted to, you could do one of, of two things. First of all, I cooked mine on high for about four hours. If I were to let it cook for another hour or so, the sauce would have reduced some more. The first thing I did was skim off the fat, just because I don't want all that fat in my final product. So I skimmed that off. Now you can do one of two things. You can, first of all, remove your, <laughs> your rosemary um, sprig, because by now all the, all the leaves have gone down to your sauce. You can puree this whole thing and it becomes nice and thick and almost creamy like gravy all over this. Or you could thicken it a little bit on your stove top with just a little bit of a cornstarch slurry. But this for me is perfect. I'm going to serve it with some rice today. But you can serve this over anything you want. For the holidays, I would suggest over some maybe baked mashed potatoes. I have a recipe on laurainthekitchen.com and they are out of this world. You can even do some polenta. You can do whatever you want it. And this kind of, literally, I'm just shredding it with two forks. It's so easy. I mean, it literally falls apart. It's amazing. If you could smell this right now, you would dive right in. And my mouth is salivating, so I better do this quickly. I'm going to serve myself some here because I can hardly take it. It smells so good. Then I'm taking those vegetables, those whole cloves of garlic that I didn't even chop because I want it to get nice and sweet. Oh, those carrots, those really lovely juices. It's just phenomenal. Oh, it's okay. I have a fork right here. I was a little bit nervous there for a second. Oh, yes. I mean, that is what I want. It is so tender. Look at that. I mean, just with a fork, it completely falls apart. Let's give this a go. Whoops. Completely melts in your mouth. Completely. You hardly even have to chew this. It's so tender. Mmm. If you didn't want to use the beer, you could totally use some more beef stock, but trust me when I tell you that that lager just gives you such a full body flavor. I absolutely love it. I'm going to go in for some more. Go to laurainthekitchen.com to get this recipe. I hope you enjoy spending time with me, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. And I'm just going to dredge it in my flour. This helps not only get beautiful color on the roast, creates a little bit of a crust, and helps, oh, wow.